Hello, Brav. We return with Bukowski in the bathtub. Recollections. I know it says recollection, but I'm going with recollections of Charles Bukowski by Tom, John Thomas, collected and edited by Philomene Long. Chapter two. Yes, I know this is, is destroyed. Two, what did Bukowski smell like? Philomene, what did Bukowski smell like? John, he had virtually no smell. For one thing, he would bathe many times a day without any soap. He would sit in a hot tub and sort of rub himself, mainly so get up and dry. Sometimes there would be, besides the beer smell, a faint vomit smell to his breath because he would go to the bathroom several times a night to throw up. Because he was in somebody else's house, he didn't have a toothbrush. All he could do was rinse his mouth out, so there would be this very faintest smell of stomach juice. Philomene, I wonder if he smelled himself. Why would he take a bath that many times a day? John, I don't know. He also liked to sit in the bathtub and jack off. He wasn't getting laid much in those days. Once in 1967, he was telling me about his most recent piece of ass. It was sometime in the late summer, and he was saying it was the first time he had gotten laid that year. Philomene, why didn't he get laid until late summer? John, that didn't come up. This is why I didn't get laid. I think he was shy. He was vain about his legs, though. He thought they were enormously thick and strong. Philomene, he appeared to be interested in legs. Do you think there was a connection? John, no. Philomene, no. He just liked legs? John, I think once a long time ago, a woman had complimented him on his legs. Yeah, the idea was that they were thick and strong. And I remember him talking about a woman wrapping her legs around him, him standing and fucking, holding her up. And she was saying, according to him, oh, honey, your legs are so strong. Philomene. So that left a lasting impression. John, I guess so. Somewhere on the tape, some woman was flirting with him and he was saying, I'm ugly, but I have these great, beautiful legs. And he pulled his trousers up to show off his legs. Philomene. And what was her reaction? John. She giggled and said, to me, they look like blue cheese. Philomene. Were there varicose veins? John. No, but his skin was very pale, so the blue veins were very, were quite visible. She said then, that's all right, my legs get gray. Sometimes they get green. And it went on from there to other things. Philomene. Interesting woman. What was her name? John. Carol Sides. She was a black woman. She was an artist and pretty good. Also a film student in those days at UCLA. Not that it matters, but this is a little thing that popped into my mind. He used to talk, not infrequently, about how ugly he was, joking, not moaning about it. One Halloween, you know those things, maybe they still do put them on the top of dashboards. The little plastic virgins, you know what I'm talking about? Philomene, yes I do. John, okay, one Halloween I was in a supermarket and wandering past the kids' toy section and there was a bin of little plastic toys, among them a toy Frankenstein, the same height as those dashboard things. So I bought it and glued a little disc magnet under the base of it and gave it to him as a present. So in the old car he had in those days, he always had it sitting up there on top of the dash. Philomene, like the Virgin Mary? John, yep. Philomene, did he see his face in Frankenstein? John, I don't recall him making the connection. He always drove very slowly, by the way. Philomene, do you think he was afraid of death? John, no, he was terrified of being pulled over for speeding and that the cop would take him to jail, so he drove very slowly and sort of slumped down in the seat. Philomene, of course that's exactly how he would see, be seen by a cop. John, yeah. Philomene, did he ever speak to you about death? John, one thing he used to say in his life, late 40s was, John, if I live to be 50, I'll live forever. Philomene, doesn't Frankenstein do that? Live forever? John, Frankenstein, that would periodically freeze him up. They would periodically freeze him up. He would appear to die, but in the next picture, he would come back. Philomene, let's end with that, because he is an immortal now, so to speak. There he is, John Thomas, with Bukowski and Philomene Long, 1986. Photo by Sherry Rose. There's Bukowski. And that's all, bro. Goodbye.